Your stuff is making you sick, it's making you unhappy, and it's making you unmotivated. Your clutter is telling you really negative things about yourself. And the worst part is we don't even know it. We don't realize it. We get that kind of yuck feeling often when we're in our homes. We wonder what's wrong with us. Why can't I just get stuff done that I need to? And I'm guessing that you don't realize that your clutter and your extra stuff is to blame for it. Now, I don't often come just straight out and say this kind of stuff because for many years, I didn't know. I knew what I had experienced in my own house. I knew that when we highly simplified our home, that all of a sudden I felt empowered, I felt capable, I felt creative, I felt like a better mom, I was more at peace, I could come home and just let my guard down. But I didn't know if that would be the experience for everyone. Now, fast forward many years, and I've got to work with lots of other women, I've got to hear your stories, I see your comments, and what does everyone say? My house feels so much better, I feel motivated, I feel at peace, I feel like I can do the things every single day that I need to do. So today I'm gonna to share with you three reasons your stuff is making you sick and unhappy, but more importantly, what you can do about it. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages eight through 13. We live in Minnesota just outside of the Twin Cities and I have been preaching the gospel of minimalism for many years now. But like I said, I knew the benefits for myself were awesome, so much better than I could have ever imagined, but I didn't wanna be so bold as to say that it would be the solution for every woman and every mom and every family out there because I just didn't know. But the truth is, now I know, I have heard the stories, I have seen the results, and I have seen what other women are doing now that their home is simplified. So the study that's most often referenced in regards to women and clutter and stress was done in 2010 in California, and they studied a bunch of different households, and they found that women who lived in a cluttered environment not only started out their day with stress, but experienced stress throughout the day, where those that didn't consider their environment as cluttered, they were able to see their stress levels or their cortisol levels drop throughout the day. That's what we would normally expect. Another study published in Current Psychology found a substantial link between procrastination and clutter of all age groups and frustration with clutter tended to increase with age. Among older adults, clutter problems were also associated with life dissatisfaction. So again, we're seeing a correlation between clutter and just being dissatisfied with our lives. Further research shows that disorganization and clutter have a cumulative effect on our brains. Our brains like order and constant visual reminders of disorganization drain our cognitive resources reducing our ability to focus, but not even just our ability to focus, it affects our relationships as well. In 2011, neuroscience researchers found that clearing clutter from the home and work environment resulted in a better ability to focus and process information as well as increased productivity. Clutter can make us feel stressed, anxious, and depressed. A chronically cluttered home environment can lead to a constant low-grade fight or flight response, taxing our resources designed for survival. This response can trigger physical and psychological changes that affect how we fight bugs, digest food, as well as leading us at greater risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Clutter might also have implications for our relationships with those around us. A 2016 U.S. study found background clutter resulted in participants being less able to correctly interpret the emotional expressions on the faces of characters in a movie. And surprisingly, it doesn't go away when we finally get to bed. People who sleep in cluttered rooms are more likely to have sleep problems, including difficulty falling asleep and being disturbed during the night. So if you ever feel like your house is stressing you out, there's actually good reason <laughs> behind that. There's a research that supports it. So again, this is helpful though, because it helps us to promote our own physical and mental well-being over the stuff that has taken up residence in our home. So decluttering our house has never been more important. Okay, so number two, you've probably heard me talk about the hierarchy of happiness. So um, this is some fascinating research that was done um, in the mid 1900s, but man, does it ring true today. We've heard the saying that stuff doesn't make you happy, and why is that? It's because you'll only find stuff in the lower two levels of this hierarchy of happiness. And that is to meet our basic needs. Do we need stuff? 
Absolutely. We need a house. We need clothes. We need food, shelter. We need safety. We need those basic needs to be met so that we can move up towards other things that actually bring true happiness, self-actualization, helping other people, becoming who we are meant to be. When we were younger, I think we all imagined that we would be becoming an even better version of ourselves. But what happens? Um, I think a couple things happen. Uh, marketing is insane. Marketing tells us over and over again, no, don't shed your stuff and move up this. Stay right here and get bigger and better stuff. Get fancier clothes and nicer cars and a bigger house and fill it with all kinds of stuff. And that's what's gonna make you happy. That is what marketing tells us and it is a lie. It is such a lie. And you can look at research. When people buy a new car, what happens? Okay, so we got our old car and maybe our happiness is here. We get a new car, we see a spike for a little bit. New car smell, it's fancy, it has a great sound system, it's nice to drive, people think I look cool. So we have this spike in happiness. A week later, what happens? You're right back down where you were. We have all experienced this letdown after getting something new. And so we have to put the blinders on to the marketing, realize that they are just trying to sell us something they don't care. <laughs> like they don't give a crap about our actual happiness. We have to put the blinders on and we have to realize that true happiness comes from moving up. And the other thing that happens is we just fall victim to our circumstances. Life is hard and crappy things happen to some of you way more than it seems like than others. And I am so sorry about that. And it can make it feel nearly impossible to continue to move up. But what I would propose is that your stuff is bogging you down. Again, like we were talking about what clutter does to us, it is very hard to think about becoming a better version of ourselves, to do the hard work that it sometimes takes to become that version. When we are living in a cluttered space that is stressing us out, it makes us feel stuck. We just get caught down here in these bottom two layers trying to organize our stuff and keep it safe and not forget we have it, feeling bad about the money we spent on it, and it makes it difficult to move up. But I will tell you this, since since we decluttered our house and simplified it, I have never felt more capable of moving up the pyramid. I have this new confidence in myself. I believe that I can do things that in the past I didn't think so. And honestly, decluttering my house and following through with that commitment to myself built my confidence. But it also gave me a peaceful environment where I feel like there are possibilities. I feel like when you walk into my highly simplified and decluttered home, it feels like there are possibilities. I don't always know how to describe it, except that I feel able, I feel capable, I feel like I can seek out the resources that I need to get to the next level. And I'm not talking, this can very much still tie into our spiritual beliefs and like who we believe that we're meant to be in line with our spiritual beliefs as well. So I'm not even trying to separate that. I'm trying to say that we all had these ideas of who we wanted to be and who we wanted to become. And I don't know why it is, but as I've decluttered my house and simplified it, I feel like that is possible. And so, I, again, I don't know why, but other than the fact that I feel like the stuff bogs us down in these bottom layers, we get stuck down there and we lose our confidence in ourselves to be able to move up. And I truly believe that for you too, if you will declutter and simplify your house, you are gonna be able to become a better version of yourself. It might look different than what we originally imagined, but I think you're gonna find a lot of happiness and fulfillment in the process. And then number three, I think I was actually standing right here when I originally talked about the silent to-do list. This is a fascinating concept. It is so cool. It, it comes from Fumio Sasaki in his book, Goodbye Things. And what he says is that every single item in our house is sending us a message. It is saying, clean me, pick me up, organize me, use me, don't forget about me, protect me. It is so interesting, the messages that our stuff sends us. And often, we don't think about it. And what is even worse is that most of the stuff in our home is sending us negative messages, negative messages. We're just going about our business, trying to live our day, and this stuff is saying, why can't you stay on top of me? Why can't you keep up with me? Why can't you keep me organized? Why does this always happen? Most of them are negative messages. Now, there are some exceptions. I'm just noticing the flowers Tom got me on the <laughs> counter here. And there are things that are beautiful and that we enjoy. Like, I look at these and I'm just like, wow, like, 
what a cool creation and what a cool creator we have. They actually cause me to feel happiness. I look at something like this and I see life and they just bring happiness to it. I almost sometimes feel sad because I know that they will um, die at some point. I won't get to be enjoy them, but for now I'm like committed to just fully enjoying them and appreciating them. So there are some things, and I do think this is where maybe like Marie Kondo's idea of like, does it spark joy, right? Is it creating happy thoughts in your head or is it feeling really negative? And so for me, I have had to declutter those things that feel negative because again, I am deciding that my mental health and how I feel in my house is more important than the guilt of stuff that I've spent money on, uh, the guilt of gifts that have been given to me, things I've accepted, I bought at garage sales that I thought I would use but I didn't actually really need. Those feelings are real and they don't feel good, but I have to keep reminding myself, no, I'm worth it and my family's worth it to have a home that is peaceful. Again, where we can come home and let our guard down. And what's been really interesting to me, I've heard a lot of women say around this concept, I feel like my house is screaming at me. Like when you become aware of this, you just look around and you look at the stuff and you're like, oh my goodness, all of this stuff is telling me things that I need to do. I have to do this and put this away and mail this back and all this. And as we begin to declutter and let that stuff go, you realize that you're decluttering the negative messages too. And again, I think as women, we're more susceptible to this. I know many women have shared this idea with their husband who didn't really quite understand their decluttering journey. And was like, listen, I don't know what this stuff is telling you, but here's what it's telling me. And that has been a really helpful concept to help them to kind of understand our world and how this stuff makes us feel. But again, it's not always easy, but if you take nothing else away from this, you and your mental health and how you feel in your house is more important than this stuff. You, a living, breathing human being, is more important than this stuff that has no feelings, no life of its own. You're more important to that, and it stinks to declutter stuff that we spent money on, that we thought we would use, but again, remember that, that messaging of marketing. They told us it was gonna fix everything, that maybe wasn't your experience. Just because they said that doesn't mean it was true. Did this stuff meet the need? Did it make your life easier? And if not, we have to be we have to be willing to let it go because it is not worth our time and energy. I watched a video uh, just recently and it was like seven things millionaires don't buy anymore. And I'm like, okay, you know, we all sometimes wonder what would it be like to be a millionaire, right? And they don't buy stuff. And he said, like, my time is so valuable that I don't want to be bothered with stuff that I just have to shuffle around and organize and take care of. They buy experiences, they maybe buy really nice cars, <laughs> right? But they don't buy the same stuff and they, they realize that their time is so valuable. And yours is too, I don't care if you're not a millionaire, your time is so valuable too. Your mental energy, your capacity, your ability to believe in yourself, to show your kids that you are becoming a better version of yourself, to be the mom and the wife and the friend that you've always wanted to be. I know, we don't think that the stuff and the clutter in our house is what is standing in the way of that. And I'm here to tell you, I think it is. I think it is. I still don't understand why all the time, except for that it steals our energy, it zaps our motivation, and it robs our time. And we can't do that anymore. We get one life and it goes so quickly. It goes so quickly. And so we can't do that anymore. And so you are worth more than this stuff. You are worth more than this stuff. Let it go and you are gonna find it so much freedom in your house. You're gonna be happier, you're gonna be motivated. You won't even have to search out videos on how to get motivated anymore because you'll be motivated. It'll be so awesome. And so I just like, I just want this for you so much. I wish I could come to your house and help you declutter. I can't do that, but the best I can do is to point you to the 600 plus videos that we have made on decluttering your house, and I can help you that way. Um, we, you know, we have courses and membership groups and that stuff too, if you do need a little bit extra help, but just keep consuming this content, keep it in front of you, unfollow people that sell you stuff, do store pickups so you don't have to go into stores, stop the flood of stuff coming in, and work on getting the stuff out, and you are gonna feel so much better about yourself. I just guarantee it, or your money back, <laughs> right? All right, well, I'm gonna link to those videos down below that I have mentioned. I think they're great resources, and I just want this for you so much, and I will just continue to shout it from the rooftops. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.